Today we're going to design and fabricate this PCB vise. You might recognize it as a stick vise. So this is a copycat version, but instead of paying $29.99 for one, I'll show you how you can make one in under an hour and about $4 of raw materials and parts. But honestly, just buy the stick vise. Because I spent about 4 hours drawing this in SolidWorks, another 2 revising errors and design improvements, and then another hour machining on equipment that's totally inaccessible to the average person. But I did make some improvements, and that's worth sharing in this fabrication video. A PCB vise is a nice thing for hobby electronics. However, a good PCB vise can make a drastic difference in your soldering experience and overall quality in your workflow. But until I saw this stick vise, I realized this is somewhat easy to fabricate, and why not do it? Because we can. Like learning any skill, making a project you want keeps you invested. So since I need to learn some manual machining and SolidWorks, I figured why not copy this and see if I can fabricate it. So I spent some time analyzing the original stick vise, basically measuring everything that fit into a nominal value and guessing the rest of the features. One feature I did want to improve was the wing nut that actually tightens down the vise. The wing nut to adjust the vise is cumbersome and a knurled thumb screw would be even better. I'll stick to metric hardware for the bolts, but the shaft is going to have to be quarter inch since that's all I can find in the scrap bin. I'm going to print the soft jaws. After all, I'm manually machining this, so simplifying some hole locations would save setup time and get it done in fewer moves. I produced each part in 3D, generated the assembly, and then the mechanical drawings, which serve as my reference and guide for all my manual machining. First, I start with half inch square stock 6061 aluminum. Using a horizontal bandsaw, I rough cut the stock to the lengths I need for each block, which is about three and a quarter inches. The mill is used to square one edge and then take the stock down to dimension, which is 3.00 inches. Micrometers are used to check this dimension and verify how much material to remove and make my moves on the digital readout on the mill. Once all the blocks are machined to size, I edge find off the stop block and the rear of the block to get my zero. The rest of the machining is really drilling holes and counter bores. For all the drilling, I use a center drill to locate the hole and give the drill bit a recessed starting hole. This keeps the drill bit from deflecting or walking when it contacts the material. The shaft in this case needs a hole drilled out at 0.25 inches, but if the shaft is also 0.25 inches, these two parts will not fit since they're the same dimension. So we need to enlarge the hole just a bit. For this, I'm going to use a reamer to cut a smooth walled hole that is 0.251 inches, just enough to get the shaft to slip through the end block. An M4 set screw will keep this block and shaft in place. And the rest is more drilling, drilling, and boring. Remember to deburr, uh, since just about every breakthrough from the drill bits will create burrs, I just use a countersink bit and deburr these by hand. You need to do that when you need to flip the block and put it back in the vise, because the burrs will kind of get in the way. The two blocks that are meant to be adjustable or slip on the shaft, these are reamed to about 0.256 inches. The third block has a counter bore hole to recess the socket head bolts. This counter bore is done with a 3 8 end mill. While I'm still in the shop, I need to use the grinder to make one clever part here, and that's the shaft clamp. It's a regular size socket head, but with a contour ground out, so it has room to bite on the shaft when tightened. The location of this hole required some guesswork, as did the counter bore and that would be the location to how close we want to creep on to where that shaft is. I'm still not happy with this location because this is one of the dimensions I had to guess, but it works for now. The soft jaws were 3D printed. Since this part will likely wear and deform from the soldering iron, I'm fine with leaving this as a 3D printed part. It's easy to replace, so there's no need to machine it. Lastly, we need to tap some holes. And you can do this in the mill when you're machining, uh, but the mill I was on had a sticky quill, so I decided to just do all the tapping at home. There is a nice way to start a tap perpendicular to whatever part you're using, and it's kind of the same process here on a drill press. Uh, you put the drill in neutral, which in this case you just take the belt off, and unwrap the quill coil so the press part just kind of floats without any resistance. Uh, so I can manually turn the chuck and tap my parts. Um, this is neat, but it's really slow. And my blocks are pretty big, so the tap should straighten out once it gets in there. So I just use my cordless drill and power tap these. It's much faster. 
I put the actual shaft in the lathe to bevel the corners, and then the thumb screws were just made on one inch aluminum stock. I used a radius tool to do this interior feature, and then bored the part and separated using a cutoff tool. Um, I did knurl them, uh, and I forgot to take a picture of that too. And I just tapped it by hand. But another alternative is just to print a thumb screw with an insert slightly undersized. Uh, this is going to be ABS plastic in this case. And then using a soldering iron, you can heat up a regular, a standard size nut and press fit that in. And that could be your thumb screw. Uh, this works pretty okay in most cases. I just picked some basic hardware to assemble this. The original stick vise uses shoulder bolts, which I modeled in in SolidWorks and put the dimensions so I could change this later, but for now I wanted to skip the $2.50 each shoulder bolt costs and just use some partially threaded M5 socket head bolts because I had them. It's a cheaper option and I'm fine with cutting corners again. I will say the hardest part to track down is the spring. I, you can't really just buy one spring. I ended up having a perfect spring I pulled out of some broken part. I don't know where it came from, but um, for the rest of the vices, and if you wanted matching pairs of springs, uh, I did find this variety pack of springs at Micro Center during Black Friday, but it sort of kills the budget when you only need like four springs. And the set screw, I already had a bunch of these from buying GT2 belt pulleys for my claw machine. Usually those come with an extra set screw, so I just use that in this case. And that covers all the hardware, just generic off-the-shelf stuff trying to build this within budget. This raw aluminum bar stock has a rough finish. It's unsightly. Fortunately, there is a bead blaster in the shop, which creates a nice, fine textured finish on aluminum. Unfortunately, the bag ripped after I made the other vices, so that step has to wait. You can see the difference right here between a bead blasted aluminum block and a non-bead blasted aluminum block. One thing to note, if you do bead blast, plug all your threaded holes because this aggregate will get lodged in your tapped holes and convince you you use the wrong thread type. So, final thoughts. I did have some things I wanted to add to this vice design, and that feature would be holding round PCBs. I modeled this up, and basically it's just some posts that can hold something round. Ideally, these would be free rotating posts with some V-grooves in them. I don't have them printed right now, but I did add two extra tap holes to accommodate for what I think is an average size PCB. I also think two thin thumb screws on an oversized bolt at the end makes for a convenient clamp for mostly anything weird. I tin a lot of wires and anything with a big flat clamping surface works well for things that just don't fit in the vise. Well, that's it. In all, this costs under $5 to make, but when you factor in how long it took in any hourly wage, it's still cheaper to buy the original. However, this was a learning experience, and I enjoyed doing something completely different. I'm posting all the CAD and drawing files on my website. The link is in the description. I will post the mechanical drawings as a PDF if you want to tackle this simple machining project. Thanks for watching.